Welcome back to the Face It Challenger Invitational with the second game of this best of three. We had an upset in the first, but I am Pulse. I'm joined alongside Stress, and we're going to be jumping straight back into the champion selects. Hicks and Bands very quickly. Yasuo Gaston and Gragas will be the first couple to be brought out. Yeah, I'm not surprised to see a Gragas ban. I mean, we talked about how Gragas is one of the more consistent mid laners right now that a lot of, uh, a lot of players will pick up, but... I mean, that'll leave one of the other mid lane champions or indeed uh, jungle champions available that won't be banned out in this game. So we'll see whether the bans uh, play out very similarly. Cassidy and Elise banned out alongside Yasuo as well. So fairly standard, nothing too surprising uh, this far. Just that change of the Gragas being banned away from Unicorns of Love. Yeah, Gragas caused major issues in that last game, specifically against that LeBlanc pick in the mid lane. So it makes a lot of sense to just bring that off of the board already. So. See what else caused them issues, or maybe there's some blanket bans they want to bring out. But the Kastan was banned already by Unicorns of Love, so there's nothing pressuring them to really uh, go for more blanket bans. Okay, so Unicorns of Love decided not to ban a third champion on blue side, which either they've had a disconnect, which they haven't, or mm. this is what we were talking about earlier, is this could be a conscious choice to allow more than one champion that they want to play through and allows them to secure their first pick. It's nothing that we haven't seen before. It's pretty uncommon, but they pick up Kale, who this will be the first game of the day of today that Kale has been available. Kale has been banned out in every single game and is so strong in the mid lane right now, and we're seeing her first pick. The response is Mundo Lee Sin. Yeah, it also significantly limits what you can pick into that Kale. Yeah. By just picking the Kale straight up, well, it's going to be strong but it's even stronger when it's against certain picks. So there's no way they're going to jump on a Vi or yeah. they're going to jump on like a Kha'Zix or something along those lines. And as a result, well, okay, you're not going to take Vi, so we'll take it as well. So Vi and Kale and also the Fresh are lo already looking very strong just on paper with those picks. Yeah, that, that is some pretty strong uh, opening picks there for Unicorns of Love. And I mean, they may answer with a, a Riven here, which, you know, Forbidden has played Riven. They do swap over to Leona, so we'll see whether they do settle on a mid laner here or not. But uh, Kale is just incredibly strong right now. Uh, she's the strongest if you can counterpick uh, an opponent's mid laner with it. That doesn't happen anymore because uh, thanks to a, a lot of players like Overpower that have really been showing off Kale recently, uh, people have seen that she's just consistent in her yeah. own right. And, you know, people, a lot of people thought that Kale was pretty much just a counterpick after her nerfs. And she's found a footing in, in mid lane. And, and definitely, players like Overpower have really showed us that Kale is consistent in games. Okay, so we've got more picks coming out after that Kale pickup. So it's going to be the actually the Karma pick up alongside Lucian. So again, Karma is a pick which is may not necessarily be picked for the laning phase, but you know, past level six and past into the roaming phase, and she really comes into her own, like other picks like um, like Galio that we've seen before from N rated. But that's going to be brought out from Cloud Nine, and in response, we're going to see Vix actually picking up another Renekton, and we'll see what Zodaz brings for the last pickup. I feel like Karma is a far more consistent pick than anything like the Galio yeah. that SK played. And Karma was seen a lot in OGN in Korea. The extra movement speed uh, burst from the uh, the Mantrid Inspire. I know it has a different name. Uh, Defiance. Defiance, thank you. Yeah. The Defiance, which is the Mantrid Inspire, which will give your team a shield and uh, extra movement speed. So you, you play Karma to get that extra utility, as you're saying, during the team fights. Also has that stun with the, uh, the, the tether available. Renekton picked up on the side of Unicorns of Love alongside Jinx as well. And we've rounded out the team compositions with the Ziggs. Okay, so Zodaz, we saw... Actually do really well with the Gragas last game, landing all of those huge Gragas barrels, but this time will be placed onto the Kale, which is a significantly different pick. Like, in all aspects of that champion, is completely different. Will be performing a different role and, and operates in a completely different manner, so I'm excited to see how Zodiaz does with this one. Yeah, it, as you said, it's, it's a different champion, but Kale isn't a particularly... Uh, how to put this nicely, <laughs> so that mid laners... Demanding? Yeah, I, I think that's a good way okay. of putting it, is... You pop Q, mm -hmm. hit them with Righteous Fury active to land the Lich Bane passive, uh, the Lich Bane proc. Then you just keep auto attacking them. <laughs> and then if you need to, you heal yourself or cast the intervention. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not quite the same as Gragas, where you know you rely a lot more on uh, the positioning of your body slam, your explosive cask, and your barrel, where all of them uh, can pretty easily miss right. if, if you're not you know, on point with your abilities. But we've already seen uh, how good the Gragas is here from Unicorns of Love. 
Kale's uh, a little bit less tricky to play. Just because things are point and click doesn't mean they're any harder to use stress. I and hate that's basically I'd insulting all AD carries. Just right click on a thing, you're done. Left up stress. That's your word, it's <laughs> not mine. I just said that Kale was a slightly implied. more straightforward champion than Gragas, which I think is, is kind of fair. Yeah, okay. I, I'll, yeah, I'll you're say, you're I'll twisting say my true. words, Mr. Fox News <laughs> over here. <laughs> <sighs> well, I've been casting with Fox Sound recently, so. That is, that is true, and I, I, I was going to say it's, it's a wolf behind us, so it, it's, it's not it's quite. It's not, not Fox. It's not quite that coincidental, but. As we said, Kale going up against Gregus. Kale, the first time we'll have seen her today. Of course, um, it's been seen a lot in LCS, like yeah. a lot of Kale, and does considerably well against most mid lane champions as well. Uh, very consistent. Uh, as soon as you get blue buff and also Nash's tooth, you can actually keep Righteous Fury on 100% of the time. Right. And that just allows you to farm so easily. You, you have the range all the time. You have the AoE pushing. And it just means you can shove a wave so incredibly quickly. Yeah, I mean, that's only the thing that like restrains Kale as a pick. Yeah. That she's like sometimes a melee champion, sometimes a range champion. And if you can turn Kale into a range champion, then you've got a good champion. Now, that means the early game, she won't have blue buff. She won't have Nash's tooth. So Ziggs will be able to push her in fairly easily, similar to the Gragas lane where in the early game, she's got to sustain herself through it, use the heals, expend mana in that way, also won't have the burst damage to burst down Ziggs. So it's a good pick here by Forbiven into this Kale. The, again, Ziggs is a consistent pickup. He's not LeBlanc where you need to get uh, insanely ahead to really scale through the game. Ziggs, as long as you aren't too far behind, will consistently deal damage, will consistently be able to push waves out and wave clear. Yeah, and it's going to be great at like kind of controlling the game, which is something we saw less from Cloud9 in the last game. They were kind of all out aggression in all of their picks. But this time around, now they've got the Ziggs, he'll be used for that extra wave clear in those extra side lanes. Karma will also have the extra utility from Defiance, as we were talking about earlier. Most likely will pick up the coin, but doesn't have to because of also that innate ability just to have that entire team speed up. So this time, it's a more conservative composition, which can still get ahead, but it's not just not like all in, try and win the game before 15 minutes. But I, I think this is what we were alluding to when we said we hardly ever see Cloud9 Europe losing lane. Yeah. Is normally they just pick really consistent champions or a, a pick that they know works well in a situation that isn't too obscure. I, I, I'm... I mean, Trundle was obscure at the time, but made complete sense when everybody realized that, oh, he shreds resistances. Yeah. And Cloud9 have got consistent champions now in every lane in this game and should play to their strengths. Their strengths are normally their decision-making, their consistency in lane, and their ability to generate gold whenever possible. And that didn't happen in game number one. All three things were completely off form for Cloud9. You know, something else we haven't mentioned yet. It's clearly on Lee Sin. Yes, and Koo, that's quite good Lee Sin player. I, I've heard know. that. Yeah. I, I, I've heard Koo is pretty good at Lee Sin. Quite excited to see how this work, works out. So many times we do see Lee Sin just straight up be banned against Koo because yeah. he is so incredibly good and mechanically talented with that champion. So, okay, maybe they're not going for all the all in picks, but they have Koo and Lee Sin. So that is their yeah. early game right there. I mean, the thing is, when, when you see a team that have a pick like Lee Sin that, mm -hmm. you know, is so incredibly strong. I don't want to, I, I don't instantly want to go, it's Koo on Lee Sin. I kind of, I, I think it's a good way uh, of bringing the point that Koo is amazing at Lee Sin, but there's a lot of, of this team composition that has a lot of strength as well. And I think Koo being on Lee Sin is kind of the cherry on top. Yeah. And I, I think shouldn't be seen as a main course. Okay. Okay. We Food analogies. Day. Look, w it, it's, <laughs> it's been quite a while since breakfast. So it has. Food analogies. <laughs> Luckily, production <laughs> did give us some food in between right. some of the games earlier. So, so uh, we have been fed and watered. And yeah. We're, we're, very we're, happy we're, hanging, we're hanging on in there. We're good. Nothing to worry about. That would be, uh, you know... I, um, my, my hunger is being completely quenched you by have, like, awesome games. Bar. No, it's Actually, awesome like, games. Actually, like, become a video game character. I'm, I'm feasting on League of Legends like today. Like dogs. <laughs> Stress. <laughs> What have we even done? I, I'm just saying what that I'm I enjoying done? the League of Legends action. You're just bringing Nintendo. <laughs> uh, okay. You know what I was trying to say before was that, you know, one day we probably are going to see like a competitive Heimerdinger player. And we're going to be like, wow, you know, the game literally is going to uh, revolve around him. Because there are more players who play Lee Sin, obviously, in the jungle. Oh, okay. Who are, like super well, good. I w I'd lost where we were going there. We went from food we, analysis to We went on a massive tangent, so I, okay, can, I so can forgive yeah. you on that. 
I, 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 can, I can tie that back now. Yeah. And I, I like the fact that Forbiven, uh, you guys can't see this, but Forbiven's the only one on his team that is running the Cloud9 <laughs> emblem. Yeah. And that was the season three Cloud9 emblem as well. So Forbiven, clearly a fan for life. <laughs> we are into game though. So we can get that up on your screen Never here. Gonna but no, oh, we're no, in. Pause. No, we can't. Okay. okay. We thought we could get there, but we can, we can take a c another couple yeah. of seconds. We have I mean, like eight seconds. We've already talked about food. We may as well talk about how good food is in Milan. It's pretty good. It, it's it's pretty good. Although somewhat questionable at breakfast. They had some cube thing. Oh so man. Okay. Are we gonna hear the cube story? I think we're gonna hear the cube story. So well, we've got a little. We got a yeah. bit of a minute. So we were having breakfast, and <laughs> alongside like the breakfast stuff, you know, you've got like muesli and yogurt. I think you had yogurt as yeah, well. No yeah. Normal things yeah. for breakfast. And alongside that was these gelatin cubes and. It just said jellies. So I was like, all right, well, I'll, I'll try a jelly. So I sat down and just had the jelly on a single plate. And it literally tasted green. And it actually tasted like a color. And I was so sad that there wasn't a purple one, just so I could have said that tasted purple. And for the rest of my life, I wouldn't have been set. Now, thankfully, we have a good segue out of this story by the fact we're heading into the <laughs> game. But that is uh, the Green Cube story. Right, we're in game here. Game number two here between Cloud9 Europe and Unicorns of Love. Unicorns of Love do lead this series one game to zero if you are just joining us. We'll see if Cloud9 can bounce back in this one. Okay, so they're going to head into the jungle. And this time, both of the teams are actually... Well, I was going to say that about Cloud9, but they are definitely fanning out. However, Unicorns of Love are heading up into the top brush. Taking a more conventional route, sometimes we see people run all the way around the side and go through the tower and then try and loop around again onto, uh, onto the top bush. It kind of limits the way they can walk, which is something the top laners usually uh, default to. But none of Cloud9 are going to see this. They didn't actually fan out into the right place. And because they're sitting in the mid lane, they don't even know that they're sitting in their jungle. Now, I wonder where Ku will start, though, because... There's a couple of different places you can start, obviously red or blue. Yeah. There we go. That's okay. basic jungling in League of Legends. <laughs> and now, this is assuming that Ku is going to be doing red here and, and looking to smite it that they could have engaged. There was nobody around. They didn't spot Ku. So they'll go back to defensive positions because they really can't expend too much time in that top jungle without actually seeing a target. So Ku's uh, positioning there, actually keeping, uh, keeping Cloud9 away from that of uh, engage. There's also the possibility that Cloud9 had placed down a ward beforehand, and that was something that Unicorns of Love just didn't know. And yeah. it, if they had done that, then Cloud9 could have collapsed on them, and they might have gone uh, for a level 1 team fight, which they probably would have been stronger. What makes Unicorns of Love's uh, t level 1 so good is obviously the fresh hook, so they can get that one pick. But if they're completely collapsed upon, which might happen here at this red buff from Sheepy, they are heading around the side. It's going to be started off from the found Cloud9. They do not have a ward, so the vision has been cut. But Vardags has been hit by that cleaver. See how much more they can do. Voidal alongside John and just following with that double shot, the light stinger passive. That is a massive amount of damage. Now, what Cloud9 are sacrificing here was the early lane uh, moments for Dr. Mundo in lane. Uses the teleport, gets up to the top lane, denies the initial red then. I, I'm a little surprised to see Ku not head for the counter jungle here, knowing that Vi would have gone to red. But very smartly, Unicorns of Love already calling that, realizing that was an option, bringing KL out of lane to secure that red buff for Vi. Okay, and that has also been warded towards the blue buff, so Ku will not want to try in the counter jungle that, otherwise he will be taken down in the early game, which would be disastrous as a Lee Sin versus a Vi, specifically in that matchup, because you cannot really afford to fall behind. Voidal gets caught. The flay into the flame chompers keeps him locked down. John is trying to basically use himself as a human shield. Barlax just turns around, takes another, another shot. And then following the piercing light, this is going to force the flash out from Vardax. That was pretty greedy from Vardax. Yeah, in the like middle of an engagement, just, <laughs> I'm going to farm. He literally turns. just turns around from Lucian and just like turns towards the creep and just, yeah. Disrespecting Lucian there. And, and that's that, really will that will give quite a lane advantage now over to Lucian and Karma. Karma managed to survive through that without really giving away too much. And... Now they've forced Jinx back out of lane. They're going to get an experience advantage. They already have 10 CS in that lane. That's going to be a tricky one to overcome. Okay, so top laners could be Mundo and Renekton again. I think we've seen this matchup uh, quite, quite a several few times. times. Yeah, today. And it always goes the same way. Both these guys do very <laughs> little. Uh, mid lane, however, Ziggs 
and Kale. And while Kale doesn't have like the constant ranged champion kind of thing going on before she gets the full cooldown reduction, Ziggs will make it very difficult for us to lane. Yeah, you can see Ziggs on the map already pushing in on that turret, and, and that's what we expect. That Kale doesn't farm too badly under turret when Righteous Fury is active, and even then, uh, is still okay at farming under the turret. You have a heal, so you can't take too much harass. Uh, from Forbidden, as you will be able to sustain yourself through it, but good warding early on in the game and, and good lane positioning will allow Kale to not fall too far behind until she starts getting the itemization to really put that pressure back onto Ziggs. So we did have John and move back to base, has picked up boots and the long sword, so just gearing up for that Vampire Acceptor the rest of his item build, which uh, looks like it could be starting towards the uh, the blood first. So again, that could be the fade, and he could be moving into the 24th first. We'll see exactly what he does, but Q moves into middle lane, moves forwards onto the walls, and jump over the wall, will be using the flash, and that'll be burnt from the Zodaz. Yeah, the Satchel Charge there, just bouncing Kale a little bit further away from Lee Sin. Satchel Charge is a very small uh, knockback, and, yeah. and difficult to land perfectly, and you, you see there that they got the knockback, but it was the wrong way, and it, it's just a little difficult to collapse on that in this early game. It's like a really, really small Gragas barrel, <laughs> where you have to like get the right direction, but this time Forbidden's done it on himself. Ku comes in for the counter gank, and Forbidden is already underneath his turret. Master of Sheepy is getting chunked down. Ku looks for the execute, doesn't quite have enough damage. Yeah, if Forbidden didn't have the mana there to throw another Q. He was trying to keep up in, uh, in positioning on that, but... You can see Zodiaz actually stopped moving away from that because Zodiaz, with a lot of health, even though he's on low mana, is actually still quite a deterrent because one Q can really set that lane off with Ignite still available. So they couldn't catch on for the kill. Both junglers making an appearance in mid lane, and as of yet, we're still at zero kills apiece. Master of Sheep, he didn't actually decide to go back, so he burnt through all of his health potions to get back up to where he is right now. So a pretty big investment, and Lee Sin is going to quite happily be moving through that jungle. Zap will land from the flay. It's just going to be fresh, keeping him in place. Yeah, Inspire was just used, but the angle on the hook was pretty good on that one. Managed to catch on even with the extra movement speed. Lee Sin going aggressive in the middle lane. Don't know whether he'll have enough to finish off Zodiaz here. But again, another good deterrent here to try and delay uh, Zodiaz, and who has just hit level 6. Yeah, until Ku hits that level 6 himself, he won't be able to just nuke down whoever he wants and have that execute combo available to him. Helisang, once again, getting that uh, hook onto Voidor, but the tether comes down, just zoning him away. As long as those pesky minions aren't in the way, Karma becomes a significantly better champion. No, this is Chachi, again, going aggressive, and that's somewhat characteristic of this Renekton Mundo lane when you consider that Renekton got level 2 first. He's really been able to put the pressure down on Odo Amni as uh, that teleport play earlier in the game, teleport nearly available again, but it's kind of hindered Odo Amni's ability to trade since in the early game. Now with the D's level 6, it doesn't really affect him so much. Sadism is available, but up until level 6, he kind of struggled under a lot of that pressure, and you can see that in that small CS difference between the two. Neither of these top laners have actually recalled yet as well, yeah. so uh, you know, that will also become a factor at some point, and will actually benefit Odoane. However, Dragon is available, and it's unlikely he'll want to expend his teleport to move back up to the top lane, even though it is very convenient. Cloud9 are positioning for it as well. It looked like they were all rotating towards it, but they were actually warding for it, which is a, a good, smart move already, getting a ward down in Tribush as uh, the first set of buffs come up. That's going to watch for a gank from Vi towards Red, but... Vi is actually headed towards top lane, and this could be a gank onto Odo Amna, who has just popped Sadism. Well, even if they pick up the kill here, as soon as Vi shows her face, they might just be able to respond to it. Odame has used Sadism. There's still about 60% HP, but it's got to be careful not to take too much damage. Isn't aware that Sheepy is just around the corner, but now he knows that it's actually has been uncharacteristically aggressive. That's just going to result in him taking down the back minion wave. Dominus has been utilized. The Mega Inferno Bomb has come into the top lane, clearing out that minion wave. Yeah, and that was just, I uh, well, to begin with, I thought Odo Amno was being a little bit cocky there, was even laughing in lane, and I was thinking that if he doesn't start to back off, <laughs> he is about to get assault and battery, but he was well, able to get away. He's Mundo. He, he he's going to be fine. Okay, John, and moving forwards, Vardag's not quite going to stay in range for that tether. And they're saying, well, able to land the hook, and everyone just kind of backs off. But what has happened as a result of that uh, engage in the top lane is Master Sheepy takes away the red buff from Lee Sin. Lee Sin takes away the red buff from Master Sheepy. 
but as long as Lee Sin doesn't smite this red buff, they're in a position to do dragon because the bottom lane has recalled and they could easily look to rotate to dragon here. So the pings co have come down and, well, they're going to know that Kale is reacting just to pick up the blue buff, but Ku are just going to take a drink and walk back to base. Yeah, Ku won't decide to uh, take down the dragon. Didn't you smite either, so... Not I think they thought about doing dragon, yeah. but weren't quite sure on the positioning, so didn't want to force the issue. Well, they knew the bot lane had disappeared, and they yeah. could have either recalled or just be sitting behind the Baron pit. So yeah, that's, that's yeah. the other one. There could be a couple of things going up, but all in all, no one decides to do too much. Nine minutes since the game, no first blood. I think we've been having quite a lot today. I mean, quite late first bloods. Quite late into the game. I think we had a 15 minute first blood at yeah. one point today, but... Again, it, it's becoming more common in the European Challenger scene as teams are so even mm. that they don't want to just walk into lane and go, I'm going to kill you because I'm <laughs> better than you, because it doesn't happen. Yeah. So, I mean, it's good to see. And, okay, it's not quite as explosive as you know other games that you'll, you might see in, in other regions, but I like to feel that it's because our teams are pretty close on the skill level. I mean, this is exactly why the first game didn't go the way yeah. of Cloud9, because they did try to run picks with just saying, I'm better than you, we're going to kill you, and that didn't actually work out. Yeah, th that's the problem with overconfidence, is, uh, you know, sometimes your overconfidence mm. can be your weakness. Okay, so another 10 minutes into the game. Not going to be uh, picking up that dragon. Oh, this might be the kill, though. Voidal was trapped within the box. Zap comes down. Super Mega Death Rocko actually whips its target. Doesn't quite connect, but this is a big reaction coming out from Lee Sin. And Ziggs, Vardag's going to come all the way through that lantern and be safe by that turret. Yeah, luckily Vardag's has faith in his friends and manages to get out of there using the Dark Passage to get away. But that opens up the dragon area here for Cloud9. They will look to take down the first dragon, although this one will be contested. Yeah, they're going to give it a good attempt. Vi is over the wall. Super Mega Death Rocket has already been expended. However, Jarnan is... Uh, you're going to get caught out in rotation. No, he's going to be he's going to be good to go. But Cloud9, let's see if they can get the steal off Master Chief. He goes up all and momentarily appears. Yeah, he appeared for a moment, then took the Dark Passage <laughs> away. So, you know, had he got the smite, that would have actually been a really smooth steal. Yeah. Not available for him, though, as uh, not able to get the dragon. Let's take a look at the differences in some of the lanes. Scrap that. There is an engage in bottom. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was an engage in bottom. No one died. It's okay. Yeah. The camera knew exactly what it was doing. Yeah. Physics actually threatening off against your draw lane once again. Okay. We can go on to that point now, Stress. Yes, we can. The differences between the lanes. You look, 88 CS to 68 on the 80 carries. And the itemization oh, hasn't no, really can't. played That's out. That's just cheaper in the middle lane. The sort and battery comes through. First blood comes down. At some point, you will be able to talk about it, but it's still not now. Well, Duarme is being aggressed upon. With the Dominus has been popped, Sadism finally comes off cooldown, and he's away home and dry. It's okay, it's not that relevant, but the camera seems to know best. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we'll keep a track on uh, the things that the camera will see. <laughs> it's one of those points that becomes less relevant after yeah. more things have happened. So yeah. then you start talking about it, it's like, ah. Uh, uh. Now, Triple Dorans on to Kale is something that, you know, is, is an argument between a few people, is how efficient Adoran's items when you buy more than two of them. Yeah. Well, because it'll give you damage. It'll give you mana regen. Yeah. But it won't be as much as if you were to spend that gold somewhere else. It's also going to be super inefficient when it comes to item slots, and Doran's items in general do follow that route. Yeah. I have a quote from Cook My Suck who said, free Doran's items, or free as, free as GG, four as poor. Yeah. I, well, I, I think that, that kind of has some grounding here, but... Also, you look at the the amount of gold that's been expended here has really pushed back the Nash's tooth here, because the Codex and the Sting have been completed. But whether it's because of the the amount of farm between forced recalls or just overall not landing kills yet, not able to get a Nash's tooth yet. Thirteen minutes in is you know it it's. I don't want to say it's behind, <laughs> because it's not particularly late in the game to have a Nash's Tooth, but I feel like you can get one sooner. Well, there's the play backwards. Halissan landing that onto Voidal, and Vardai actually rushes straight through that box, and there's that point-blank ultimate from Jinx, just getting that Get Excited passive, gets her out of dodge, and we're going in for round two. There's the Dragon, but Ku is in hot pursuit. He'll just keep his ally alive, but this might be the collapse from the mid laner of, in fact, both of them. Ku gets dragged in by Flay. He's still hyper-maneuverable. Forbidden just kind of wanders into the bot lane. 
Yeah, now they've got to be in. They've oh. got to be careful that they don't get pushed. Master of Sheep, he gets knocked back into the turret, and indeed, the, the Mega Inferno bomb picks up another kill. And that will stop the push. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they don't have to <laughs> be so, so careful anymore. Kale will return, all the top laners are finally low enough to both disengage. Yeah, and both of these guys will uh, either use sadism or go back to base and do it yep. all over again. Yep, that's it's top lane. How long does it take? It took 14 minutes to reach that stage, and another 14 minutes time will we'll hit that point again. Now, it doesn't take 14 minutes for Ku to get to bottom lane. Yeah, going for another gank. There's the lantern, breaks the tether in the meanwhile. Ku has landed it. How deep does he want to go? Not, not under tower. He does not want to dive the tower quite yet. Doesn't have defensive items. Opted for boots and mobility first. Will likely go for a sight stone fairly shortly. Uh, other options are the Elder Lizard for extra damage to get into the back line, but Varag's decided to stay. He has, and uh, they're still hanging around. Do they have anyone around the area? Well, it's going to be Vi, and see how much cheap he can do about it. Last time he went around the bot lane and Lee Sin was there, he died. So we'll see if they have better results this time round. I'm going to start recalling John and going to be heading on back, and Sheepy, he knows when he's not needed. Yeah, I think the other point of that was Zodia has actually started to move out of lane in Vision. And that's not a position that Cloud9 want to be in. But Biven had already backed, and they don't want to risk giving kills to Kale. Because as soon as Kale gets Lich Bane and the Nash's Tooth, that is a lot of damage. That is her core items, followed up by Void Staff, is just too much damage to deal with. The damage is a big number, so let's see how this bot lane handles this. They're going to handle it by going back. Physics actually picks up the tower in the top lane. Actually, curiously, I'm surprised that went down so quickly. I guess he just out-rotated Aldromni when he went back to base. I think he got a fair amount of damage on earlier because of the amount of uh, th that lead that he had from gaining the extra experience and hitting level 2 first. So, you know, it, it's just one of those things that it is a little early to what we'd expect the top lane tower to fall at. It's not going to make any difference, but yeah. it, it will allow Q to walk into this uh, into this bush. But it has been watered, and I think that's been called out. As he walks on through, Voidal gets caught. There's the box coming down. John is going to try his best, but Voidal pulled back into the Super Mega Death Rocket lands. And Hlissang just backs off the turret. There's one kill by Master of Sheepy. I was just assisted by Vardags all the way when he was walking back into lane. We're seeing the unity by Unicorns of Love here. That They're really good at these team plays. Which is kind of surprising against a team like Cloud9 Europe, who, you know, that's one of their strengths, is their team fighting is normally incredibly good. However, Unicorns of Love are putting on a pretty much a good show here against the team. All right, we're going to take another quick look at that last fight. Okay, so as you can see here, it's a 2v2 to begin. Uh, Thresh looks to Lantern in, uh, sorry, Lantern for the shield here. Vi comes in, Assault and Battery. The box didn't really get popped. There's the rocket from halfway across the map out of Jinx, and they catch on for that first kill. Okay, so going back onto Team Synergy, or in fact not because Forbidden's going to be forced to flash over the wall, but going back onto Team Synergy, I mean, that's one of the reasons why friendship is magic from Unicorns of Love. That face that stress just gave me could kill a face. Anyway, Dragon is going to be really taken down by Unicorns of Love with that great synergy. And it doesn't look like we're going to have any sort of contest from Cloud9. They won't be able to contest that dragon at all. And uh, Odo Amnit looking to push up into the top lane as well, but he's pretty low on health. Sadism not quite available. Teleport wasn't available either, so Unicorns of Love are looking in a good position here. 2.7k 2, 2 gold is their lead right now, and Forbiven's past the point where he can really shove Kale in. Kale has that Fiendish Codex and uh, has been given blue buff before, will likely pick up this next one. And that really just means Kale is now in full pushing mode, where Righteous Fury just burns through waves and she pushes the turret. And she's going to have that Righteous Fury most of the time now, which yeah. is going to make it fairly difficult for Ziggs to do too much. As usually he is able to auto attack harass, but as soon as he gets in range of Zodiaz, just one reckoning and then the auto attack follow up might just result in Forbidden's death, especially when he's so low. Even with that satchel charge, doesn't want to get in range of that. So, Ku heading around the side, but plenty of wards in that river. It's just going to keep their jungle safe and keep Ku not in good shape. John has reacted well with his support, so he should be able to get out of dodge, but he's going even deeper. 
Yeah, they've got to be careful they're not going too deep here. Ku will be rotating around to the bottom lane, looks for the gank. They're going to go for it. The ward comes down, jumps onto Halesang, and now the teleport comes in for Mundo. This is going to be a four-man collapse. Varlax gets dragged out of the turret. He might be able to survive this one. Odale is trying to keep on top of them. Ku misses the Q. In fact, lands onto a minion. There's a counter going from Master of Sheep, and he has certain battery use. And now the reaction from Zoli as from mid lane. John, and good luck. He was going to need it. Tries to get over the wall. Oh, there's definitely, uh, definitely his face is embedded in that rock. Cloud9, what is going on? They look to engage there and then let the Dark Passage go through. They rotated out of the way and couldn't follow up because they were all going back into the tower. Hyanan was actually, I believe, for part of that, tanking the tower alongside Voidal rather than Ku and uh, Mundo, who would have been the members they wanted. And then, again, it's uh, another product of being behind in this middle lane is Forbidden just isn't able to rotate down. Yes, he's got a CS lead now. They've caught out Voidal, though. Yeah, Volbreaker comes through. Halesang just drags it back with Flay. We'll see how he can get out. Ku jumps over the wall. He's actually going to take that for his ally. Let's see if he actually escapes from this one. John and over the wall is going to assist with the culling. For Pippin is rotated from the mid lane. Picks up one. Ku is still incredibly low, but is hunting for more. Vardags, Master of Sheepy are in good shape. Oh, the bomb comes through and picks up the second. Vardags has been used. The intervention has come onto him. Bazoda has a reaction from the middle lane. So Forbidden is still looking for this kill. Bouncing bomb picks up another. Forbidden is very happy at this stage. Ku comes in from nowhere, lands a sonic wave. And I mean, that definitely more than makes up for that bot lane trade. Yeah, for Biven, that is uh, an easy roam for you. It was into your own jungle. <laughs> but you need to start roaming more because you, when he's uh, able to put the damage down, you can see how much easily they take these trades. They now take a turret from it and may even look to push this in and uh, reward the area and just make sure that they're in a good position here because they're still not ahead even after that. With another turret going down, there's still 1,000 gold behind here. Well, still in the space of 30 seconds, they almost equalized the game after being 6-1. and one. That was the current scoreline 30 seconds ago, but past that, this was a great turn about, uh, turnaround by Cloud9. It's just weird that the interactions that should have been going better or not, Vizic Sachi jumps over the wall, picks up the kill on Taku. And also picks up the red buff as well. Yeah, Ku thought he was safe with his red buff. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere is safe from Renex and then mid lane. It's going to be cleared out by Forbidden, but not even mid lane is going to be safe from the Renekton rotation. In fact, Kale is sitting at top lane, so I'm just going to go for that quick, uh, quick swap up. Yeah, now, where will Cloud9 go in this game? They uh, have to do something to try and come back into it. They had a good passage of play, but now have found themselves even further behind. And now they like has found themselves so far to arm. Vizic Sashi moves forwards, and there's the slice and dice. Atomic Bomb comes across the wall. Mega Inferno Bomb, sorry. And now Master of CP moves onto that back line. Adorni is still alive. Sadism has been used. He's just out regening them. Finally will drop. Was anything else happening with the rest of the team? Indeed, it has the jungler drops down. And that's a two for one trade. For Biven caught out in the mid lane. There's another one for three. Huge advantage for that team of Unicorns of Love. Yeah, Kale picks up the shutdown gold as well here. So we'll be well on the way to that Lich Pain. Is alongside the Nash's Tooth. And now they're pushing onto the turret, but no minion wave means they're in a little bit of trouble here. I think it's actually forced to back off with the rest of his team. Vardags is the one who's right on behind. Nice sidestep. And the culling comes across. We'll see who's going to take that. Actually juggling the damage. Keeping them all alive. Yeah, just, uh, you know, making sure they're not falling too low off the culling there. But uh, nevertheless, Unicorns of Love will pick up their own jungle and uh, try and consolidate the lead that they have here. That was... Uh, a big passage of play for them. They actually picked up more gold there, so they were able to go to 4,000, but Ku is in his opponent's jungle. There's the death sentence, and there's the rest of the CC. He's going to give it a valiant attempt at getting out, and John also tries to assist that, but that might result in his life. Zap comes down into another death sentence, definitely living up to his name in this game. There's the double kill, and indeed the get excited passive. There's another hook landing onto onto the karma for the triple kill. Get promptly shut down by Forbidden, but we'll be jumping over Vardags. And Vardags looking for his next kill. In fact, his fourth is gonna be the, the Quadra. Well, I guess the unofficial Quadra wasn't quite in time, but still, five, one, and four. And they're gonna be this turret as well. And Unicorns of Love are looking very strong here. They push down another turret and are looking 
to really stop Mundo in this top lane as well. That's where one of them will be going, but Unicorns of Love are looking very good against yeah. one of the yeah. top European Challenger teams. And this is going to rotate, pick up another easy dragon, and Cloud9 seem to be not in the best of shapes. So Diaz seeing top lane, do they have a saving grace? This is the time we look at that, but we are going to see a quick replay of that last engage. Okay, so as you can see, Ku way out of position here in the enemy jungle. Not sure what he was looking for, but he found three members here of Unicorns of Love. Gets taken down to begin that one, and the chase is on. You can see Talisman of Ascension got popped into Zap. Hook landed, and this is just a clean sailing here from here on for Jinx. Lands the Zap once again. Another hook. That one was, uh, you know, max range on that. Okay, they lost uh, Thresh for it. Sorry, they lost Karma for it. No, they lost Thresh Yeah, they for definitely it. Yeah, lost Thresh for it. They lost Thresh for it. And they ended up picking up Ziggs. But again, this is just back-to-back -back kills. And that's what the Get Excited passive gives you on Jinx. That was basically the perfect situation that demonstrates how strong Jinx's passive is. Catching one kill after another. So current scoreline being 14 and 7, doubling their kill total of Duane. That's caught up in the top lane, but wasn't able to completely finish them off. Now, let's have a look at the differences between some of the players. 259 CS to 222, and that's the uh, the effect of that Righteous Fury. The ability to farm and pretty much get every minion in every wave because of uh, the AoE damage that you're doing on auto attacks, which is incredibly consistent. Now, on the other side, we see there is a, a bit of an advantage down in the AD carry position, but the difference in kills really separates the gold. It looks like Unicorns want to go for Baron. Who is being dragged near that Baron pit, but now they know exactly where they are. We'll see if they carry this on. Unicorns of Love are definitely in the commanding position, but not sure they're that commanding. Huge reckoning, chunks coup low. Here's their guy who's going to keep them... Uh, in contention if they try and go for that Baron still. Master Sheepy looking to follow up. He does have his ultimate. See if he can get one pick as these guys move back to their base. See if they can crack that shell. But they just zoning him away. Master Sheepy is still looking for that Vault Breaker. Kale is trying to cut off that escape route, but is by herself. Yeah, we'll be able to heal up that damage done. And is the distraction enough? They're looking for the inhibitor turret, but they might be caught. Mega Inferno Bomb comes down for the engage. Ku follows up, but they're just too maneuverable. And Ku might be the one who's going to get turned around upon. Lands another Sonic Wave, and we'll see if this is the one he wants to go into. Funky interaction, but... Okay. Well, there was the defiance into safeguarding away from <laughs> uh, your opponents, but... That was only Defiance, so it will be back and available in uh, probably another 15 seconds by the time Karma has uh, Mantra available once again. But there's a big difference in damage on these AD carries. You look at Bloodthirster Static Shiv to a, an unfinished Trinity Force Bloodthirster. For Biven might be caught as well. The Zixachi looking for this one. Zodi has unable to quite get there. Ku knocks him over the wall, follows into the rest of his team. This is absolutely perfect. The intervention is keeping him healthy. We'll see if we can get out. It's definitely going to be a no. Now, the Defiance comes across, and they can't quite find a second target. Yeah, not too sure whether that was all that worth it for Zodiaz there. Okay, he didn't really give away uh, anything like shutdown gold, but he was a distraction to allow the rest of his team to get out and to uh, gather themselves around the map. Jinx looked to split push in the bottom lane, but the rest of the team just wasn't around for that. So right now, 5-3-3 three, three is three. scoring for Forbidden, who is basically the only member on his team doing all that well. It's going to be Lucy in the head and CS though, on top of Jink, but 5, 1 and 4 definitely makes that difference uh, more than make up for that differential in gold in terms of minions. Now, Cloud9. They've got to come back into this somehow. I've said that a few times now, <laughs> but it, it's, it's still true. true. It, it remains true in this game. They're closing the gold lead and then let it slip away from them again, and they close it and it slips away again. And They need to hold on to it. <laughs> they do. Hold on to the unicorns. Hold, hold them by the horn, as it were. That's rather rude. No, it isn't. Well, no, I just mean if you were to see a unicorn and then just, oh. like... What, you were going for a different meaning then? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I was not going there. Okay. Fair enough. But Voidal heading around the side will find himself a good old members of the Unicorns of Love. As well, they going to go for that classic split plus strategy. At the stage of the game, he can probably take that outer turret. Doesn't even need those minions. How low is it? Oh, all right, thank you, camera. I well, don't even get to know. Yeah, it's it's okay. Yeah, it's probably pretty low. We'll well, we'll see it here. It's yeah. Uh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. It, it's low. Brilliant. We got we <laughs> nailed it. Got it. Got it. But 
something that hasn't been had yet in this game is the Baron. Yeah. It's That's been true. attempted by Unicorns of Love, but they haven't been able to secure it. Now, with Mundo pushing, they've got a couple of options. They're pinging the Baron pretty heavily here. They can't afford to waste time and bait. They have to start the Baron or pick a fight here and make sure they get it, get the fight right because Mundo is going to teleport. It's just how much damage will Mundo do before he's forced to teleport? Clown Man are on a timer and they're cutting it awfully fine. There's the teleport. Ku comes in. It's going to be smited away by Vi and already dropping Ku. This is going to be a 4 versus 5 and they're completely out of position. Physics actually, there comes the intervention onto that tank and no one drops from that team, and they have the Baron. The flash forwards, oh, he lands! Another death sentence onto Adwame! Jarnan and e the uh, carry of Forbidden, unable to do much else themselves. Master of Sheepy is getting completely punished, and they do not have too much left in their arsenal. Jarnan is chasing awfully deep, with two members dead, three versus five. They are just going to walk back to base. That is enough for Unicorns of Love. They will be happy with that trade right there. They pick up two. They pick up the Baron as well. And they didn't lose the second turret off that. I think they could already have written off uh, the outer turret in bottom lane. And that should have fallen a while ago. But the fact that Mundo didn't get too much. He's now burned that teleport cooldown. There are a lot of summoner abilities used there as well. And uh, again, Unicorns of Love just establishing a lead. This time it has spiked to a massive nearly 10,000 gold. And I'm not sure that this is something that Cloud9 can come back from because so many times during this game, as was mentioned, it's been an uphill struggle, but they have just gotten to the gotten to the top before they slide back down again. I think it's a little too steep. And especially when that Lich Bane gets finished on Kale, that is going to be an incredibly steep hill to climb with a Rabidans as well. That is so much damage. There's the Lich Bane finished up onto Kale. That's going to decimate in probably three shots, whoever Kale chooses, except for Mundo. Basically become a vertical climb. Like, <laughs> uh, I hope they're good at rock climbing, because that's what they're going to need for this stage. That, True yeah, story. That, that's, that, I guess that's a good analogy. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we can see unicorns of love. Of course, unicorns living in a mythical world probably have the power of flight, so True. don't need to climb up. Well, they're already on top. It depends whether you're running on them. Bethesda physics, right? Because then you can just go up the hills. But you know, <laughs> if it was Bethesda physics, it would just have like flown off and gotten stuck in the ground somewhere. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good point. <laughs> Tumbled down a hill. Yeah. However, this is Riot Games physics, so there Makes are no hills. There are no hills. It's five v five and we're here on Summoner's Rift. So, let's see how Cloud9 hang in on this one. Because the one thing they have going for them is Ziggs is fairly well farmed. He's a little bit behind on CS, but 295 at 31 minutes is still respectable, mm -hmm. especially when you consider five kills on top of that. Has the Rabidans, the Athenes, and the Void stuff, so we'll be doing a lot of damage. So, if Unicorns of Love uh, end up, uh, you know, standing on top of each other quite a lot in these fights, they might be able to get good damage up. That's just GP utilizing the sword and battery of Dom. They get followed up upon. There's the box. The Mega Inferno Bomb comes across and drops everyone low. That's for an action for some reason behind the enemy lines. Ku gets dropped. A Super Mega Death Rocket will claim that one. And Renekton is still around the turret. He wants to go for round two and will attempt to do so. Dominus is still ticking. Master Sh Sheepy jumps in. Zodiaz moving underneath the turret. This is disastrous from Cloud9. Karma gets destroyed underneath that in the turret. Felix actually tries to go deeper. I'm not sure if this is going to be the final push, but this will probably be an inhibitor. Yeah, this will be an inhibitor from this. You can see already Zodiaz, how much damage he's doing. And of course, with the Lich Bane as well, we'll shred through this turret. If he goes for the, he doesn't even need to go for the turret. He's going to go for the kill onto Mundo. Odamna will be okay from that one, but they pick up the inhibitor and now we'll fall back, re-itemize and establish control again. And again, this is uncharacteristic of Cloud9 Europe. They're still dragging the game out and keeping themselves in the game, but they're in the game via duct tape. And <laughs> Ziggs is that duct tape. And as long as he stays alive, okay. But it's not going to win them the game. Explosive duct tape. Yeah. He's, he's the hexplosive expert, not the adhesive <laughs> expert. <laughs> that would be singed. That would be singed. Yeah. We're singed Keep all together with mega adhesive. Oh, that would be such a good point. The mega adhesive bomb. <laughs> that would be, that'd be a completely different ability. However, everyone just gets stuck down to the ground. Make it happen.
Yeah, make it happen. New champion. Make oh! A oh! Quite a lot of damage. Slow dance doesn't choose okay. to follow up. Shannon got away from that one. Uh, Zodiaz didn't have flash available, so couldn't follow him. But that was a lot of damage from Kale. Uh, that's what we expect from Kale. As, as I said, as soon as you have the, the core items completed on Kale, uh, she just does so much damage in those initial couple of attacks that whoever her target is tends to die. Zodiaz is on four items, yeah. and we can see how much damage four items actually results in, which uh, turns out to be most of his HP in one second. I mean, he had to use both summoner abilities quickly. Yeah. He, there was no delay on that. That was hitting DNF at the same time while angling over the wall. So that was actually quite a, a, a good play by Hyanan to nail both. Yeah, it was good reactions and chaining them all together. I mean, my response would have been to mash the keyboard and flash <laughs> into Kale, which would, would have resulted in the same thing. But either way, those both summoners being down on that AD carry means it's just another nail in the coffin for Cloud9 at this stage. Yeah, and I, you wonder how many they need to shut that lid and, and mail it back to uh, Cloud9 headquarters. Wherever they came from, yeah. Cloud9 headquarters in North America. But we've, we've mentioned it a couple of times. This is very uncharacteristic of Cloud9. And Unicorns of Love have looked incredibly consistent in this game. They, they've not really pushed themselves where they had, you know, a disadvantage fight. They've looked in control as well. And against the team that have controlled well, that is a big achievement here for Unicorns of Love. As long as they just chip away at the turret, they are winning. Unicorns of Love, all they've got to do is just do some damage to that turret every time the minion wave comes in and just not get taken down by the duct tape. Yeah, they, they had to use the culling there to burn through the wave. I mean, Ziggs normally has great wave clear and just wasn't in the right position to be able to do it. And the more the waves push in with bottom lane inhibitor down, the more split Cloud9 are going to be. You can see Vizichachi already knows he's fine trading against Mundo for a little while, so can push that lane in as well. But Unicorns of Love are going to take a little bit of time to go back and buy here. They know Baron is up in 20 seconds, so they need to compose themselves and make sure their items are at peak point before that fight. And it's good to go back right now. Like, a lesser team would have just carried on pushing, trying to take down this turret. Cloud9 may have picked up a good team fight, then gone for the Baron, and then swung the gold again. But Unicorns of Love have just backed up the base and will be contesting the Baron instead, which will take away the opportunity for Cloud9, draw them out of their base where they're significantly weaker, and go for this one again. Yeah, and of course, with the bottom lane inhibitor down, we've talked uh, a number of casts about how more significant the bottom inhibitor is with regards to map control, because it puts you the furthest possible way from Baron, and with Lee Sin clearing the bottom lane, they had to use the Mega Inferno Bomb to one, get vision, and two, try and steal, and it wasn't effective. No, and that's a big cooldown down, especially like in terms of clearing minion waves, because last time they had to use the culling, and if they want to just delay using these big ultimates just to give them more time, then Mega Inferno Bomb is also going to be off the cards, so this might be the last push that these guys need. And with that inhibitor back up, it means Cloud9 don't have to dedicate too much to that bottom lane anymore, but they have to be aware that it's still open. They do land a hook, but they're not quite in position. They landed it onto Mundo. They're not in a good position. Honestly, they completely split. Adami gets the ultimate down on, but doesn't even care. At the stage, though, Diaz is trying to back up. Super Mega Death Rocket comes across. Lands off for Bivin. Won't be executing anyone, but Zodiaz gets the huge burst off immediately onto that back line. Jarnan has dropped, and there goes Adami just disappearing as soon as that reckoning is up. That's going to be the game. The inhibitors are going down. Three people are in the death chamber from Cloud9. I don't possibly see how they can come back from this. You always expect them from Cloud9. But the first Nexus turret will be falling, followed by the second. And this looks like a 2-0 series a by Unicorns of Love. A 2-0 series over the favorites for the entire tournament is a huge upset and a big feather in the cap here for Unicorns of Love. And they were in control for almost all of the game. There, there were very few points that Cloud9 were out of control of either game. There was a bit of hesitation in terms of control from time to time. But if you just like reverse the roles and said, OK, that was Cloud9, you'd have been like, OK, yeah, that was pretty convincing. But Unicorns of Love looked incredibly good. Yeah, that was convincing. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think a lot of people would have written that one off 
to begin with and just said, oh, Cloud9, okay, they're, they're probably going to take that. But Unicorns of Love showing why you cannot underestimate the European Challenger team. European Challenger teams, guys, are, are pretty strong if you haven't already noticed <laughs> throughout today. Yeah. So that's going to be the 2-0 and o series, and we all have the last best of three. I can't believe it's already on the last best of three today, I know, Stress. But it's a big best of yeah. three. This one is going to be two titans going up against each other. Uh, Ocelot World, La La Lol, Gamers Game 2, two yeah. whatever you want to <laughs> call them. I think we're probably going to go with Ocelot World or Triple Lol as we head into that. Go yeah. up against SK Gaming Prime, former Super Team EU Kappa. This should be an amazing series. We will be back with that best of three in a few minutes here and the Face It 